Now resiliency is important to our lives, and I'm very pleased right now to be joined by our provost, Lotta Ramshad. Uh, Dr. Ramshad has been a friend and a colleague of mine since I first met her in a search committee process on which I was a co-chair uh, looking for a new provo provost. We went to the University of Houston and we found her and got her to get in the, in the, in the process. And I'm really glad to introduce you to not only someone that I see as a colleague and a friend in terms of working here at the university, but truly a friend, someone that deeply believes in what we do and understands that in spite of the incredible challenges that we've gone through in the pandemic, that we can be resilient. She understands what we do in extension. And again, I'm very delighted to bring her today to you to bring you some comments. Provost Ramshad. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marshall. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay, good, good. Uh, thank you for that wonderful introduction. And, you know, uh, this is the nice thing about having Marshall as your friend, because he was on the search committee that he chaired that that recruited me. So if I make mistakes, you can blame him for that. Uh, it's I, I was just uh, delighted, really pleased to hear our speaker, Mr. Jones Laughlin, you know, everything you said, uh, Mr. Laughlin, was just, it just struck a chord because we're living some of that as we speak. So it's nice for someone to say, that makes sense. You, you said, go as far as you can go and, uh, you know, don't, don't second guess yourself. The resilience, the, the taking care of yourself, uh, those are messages that are like a vitamin shot, right? So I, I so much want to thank you for sharing your, uh, your thoughts with us and look forward to reading the book. You know, Marshall, when I think about uh, resilience and what a great topic you all chose, couldn't have been more timely. The last uh, seven plus months uh, really is a chapter in Mizzou's resilience, right? If we, if we were to write the history of this institution, I, I think back, I think it was the week of March 8th, if I recall right, when things started moving and shaking, right? We, um, in three days, over a weekend, we literally took 7,000, over 7,300 courses online over three days. And two of those days were the weekend, right? So uh, it was just uh, mind boggling to think back right now. We brought back students from foreign countries who were on study abroad. We did things that we would never have dreamt of doing. Uh, and then it, it was as if we were piloting a plane and building it and we didn't know where we were gonna land, but we, were, we didn't even have time to think about it. And then there were other macro level changes that happened. We had changes in leadership. We had a budget problem. We had two rounds of budget cuts. And then we had one more and we, they tell us we're still not done. And then we had racial tensions in the nation. Uh, you know, just, just a stream of events that has challenged who we are. And, but the, the beauty of all this, the resilience has shown up in just, uh, you know, just an amazing way. When I see every one of you, whether you're a faculty member, you're a staff member, whoever it is, what you all have done in these last seven months is nothing short of inspiring. People have worked harder than they ever did. And again, not knowing when this is gonna stop. I get emails from faculty who are so concerned about the students that they are uh, in the class with. Uh, and the compassion you have shown, the grace with which you've handled some of these tough questions uh, has just been uh, just amazing. And you know, in academia, I always say, we don't get things done on time. Forget, there's no time. The clock in academia is a very different clock. Everything takes a minimum of say, at least three and a half to four years for us to get like a document ready to share. And then it has to be approved by 17 committees. And even then you never know if it's gonna happen. But we did things, uh, you know, last semester and continue to do that that would have taken us years to do. Grading changes, commencement changes, changes to the fall semester schedule, uh, social di socially distanced classes, figuring out how many students will fit in a class, how many classes could be offered, the registrar's office. And, and the, the extent of the work that was done was really transformational. But what it is really interesting to me. So I, I, every now and then, I mean, anymore, it's not like there is, I don't think we have weekdays and a weekend. It's all just the same format. We're working 24 seven, but every now and then, as Mr. Jones pointed out, I do take time to, to try to reflect on what 
what was special about the last seven months? Because in some ways it is a gift, right? This experience is a gift that we will carry with us because we are all the better for this experience. And the one thing that strikes me is that we were resilient and we got things done and we didn't give up. Why? Because our North Star was the learner. The learner who, as Marshall always points out to me, is it's not just the 30,000 students we have on our campus, it's the 6 million people who we serve in this state. Every one of them, and you all, you all know that part of the equation better than anyone else. And you stood there willing to serve the learner. And you stood there willing to do whatever it, whatever needed to be done to serve the citizens. And that is always, always our North Star. If that can guide us, everything else falls into place because that gives you a reason to be resilient. It's not about me, it's about the learner. Speaking of that, I want to uh, share with you, Marshall and I have been talking about how can we use this crisis and the learning that has come out of this crisis to better serve the citizens of our state? What can we do as uh, the flagship institution to serve the citizens of, Mizzou, of Missouri? What can we do? What can Mizzou do to serve Missouri in ways we've not thought about before? It could be, for instance, people looking for alternative jobs, people looking to retool, people looking to, uh, to find another way to make a living because something is not working out. And there are several things that could not work out, but can we do it in a way that serves them in their way, as opposed to, this is how we do it here, you need to come here and you need to learn it our way. No, it's about the learner. If the learner wants to get it, wants to get a degree, but they don't want to come on campus, we need to be able to offer it to them. If they want a certificate that they don't need to come on campus, we need to be able to deliver it to them. Is there a credential? Is there something else we can offer so that we are constantly serving the citizens of our state? And uh, we've been talking about that. We will have something more concrete to share. But again, all this is wrapped, it's so beautifully wrapped around this concept that you all are, are discussing today, which is resilience and the resilience that every one of you has shown in these last few months, again, is just so inspiring to me. And I, I really wanna thank everyone who's listening. Thank you, Marshall. Thanks to your staff. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, you know, we could not do this without everyone's um, uh, cooperation and help. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to you, Marshall. Thank you, Provost. It's a joy to have you with me today. And obviously, uh, we've got a lot of road ahead of us. And I look forward to what we're going to do together. I, I knew uh, when we brought you here, we were making a good decision that day. And even though I had to get on the phone and and do my part to recruit you here, uh, we, we got it done. So uh, really glad you're here. And as they've already heard you speak and also Dr. Choi, one of the things I want all of you to think about in both of our uh, leaders of the academic institution here is that you've heard people who really have a commitment to service. They understand the servant leadership piece that every land grant should have. They get that. And that's critically important to the work we do for all six million Missourians. So with that, I'm gonna ask you to stay with us. We're gonna uh, surprise our faculty here for the next couple of minutes. We've uh, been working and trying to figure out how to really recognize resiliency. Um, and with so many things, we've had to change our thinking, we've had to change our processes, we've had to pivot very quickly. And we know there's some folks that really deserve some great attention. And uh, so what we've done, our awards committee has uh, been working with us very closely and we've come up with a new award for 2020. It's called the Show Me Resilience Award. Uh, you know, resilience is something we've heard a lot about. We've used it a lot. We grabbed it quick when we were in March. We began to work on that word and use it a lot. And one of the things that Kim Foley, who works in our office, came to me with was an article from Harvard Business Review that really talked about three traits of what it means to be resilience, resilient. First of all is a, a staunch acceptance of reality, a down-to-earth view of reality that matters for survival. So acceptance of where you are. The second piece is a deep belief in awfully strong-held values that life is meaningful. It's really in our belief structure. So we know where we are, we know what our beliefs are, but then the next piece of it's really important in resiliency, and that is how can we improvise? What is that in, 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 innateness in us that tells us that we can improvise? We can pivot and do what needs to be done in spite of what's going on around us. And if there's ever been a group of people who have shown that in full measure, 
in 2020, it's been MU Extension. So with that, I want to uh, share with you that we have faced some unprecedented challenges, and we don't know all the future and what it will hold, but your work has exemplified these traits, and we know that it's important for us to recognize our colleagues who have been nominated in various ways as shining examples of resilience during these times during this pandemic. I wish we had time to share all 44 stories, and a lot of this is available on our MU Extension website. But each one of your test is a te each one of you is a testament to, our, to dedication, creativity, determination that you want to serve Missourians. And no matter what's happening, you're going to do that. So these award winners will receive the Show Me Resilience Journal, which I have with me today. You'll get a copy of this in the mail, an award certificate, and a custom Show Me Resilience Zoom background that you'll be able to use for future things you may be doing on Zoom, because it looks like we're all going to be doing Zoom for the near future. Uh, and so again, we want you, when you come back from lunch, we want you to be able to use that. So I'm going to ask our folks now to roll the winners of the Show Me Resilience Awards. Congratulations to all the Show Me Resilience Award winners. Grab your new Zoom backgrounds and show them off during the program meetings after lunch. And let's all use our social media channels to shout out these winners using hashtag Show Me Resilience. Let's let everybody know how proud we are of our colleagues. Um, I know we're running behind just a couple reminders. Um, check your schedule in the event guide to find the Zoom link for you, you need for your program meeting at 1 p.m. This is an important time for you to gather with your program area faculty and leaders. Your program directors have worked really hard to develop a meaningful afternoon with discussion and planning around where our work intersects with and supports um, statewide and local workforce development efforts. We will be back tomorrow at 8.30 to focus on workforce development with some more great guests, attendees from the other universities, partners, and communities around the state. Tomorrow's sessions are sponsored by the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and they'll be joining us as well. There are some workforce development uh, resources in the event guide on that left side navigation to give a little background and provide some preparation for you for tomorrow's sessions. Be sure to check those out. Don't forget to check the activity feed and the social wall and connect with your colleagues, and we will see you in the morning at 8.30. Thanks, everybody.